Make a date with the TVAM team tomorrow on Good Morning Britain. Actor Roy Marsden joins us to talk about life as Chief Inspector Adam Dalgleish. We go in search of the elusive perch with our fishing expert Stan Peacher. Jenny Barnett opens more of your letters from her Friday post bag. And Jimmy Greaves joins us with his pick of the weekend's TV highlights. With the latest news and weather every half hour, that's Good Morning Britain tomorrow from 6.15 on ITV. No fun. All you want to do is watch television. What you need is an important job requiring great skill and talent like me. Ah! Oh. You'll do that one more time and I won't let you watch The Little Green Man. Zoom Zoom for a day by the river. It was very hot and sunny, and the first thing they wanted to do was lie on the grass and watch the boats on the river. Then they started throwing a large coloured beach ball about, and that's when the trouble started. The ball went over Skeets' his head and disappeared into the trees. Skeets dashed off to get it back, but couldn't see it anywhere. As he searched, he was met by a grumpy-looking man who was holding something up in his hand. Hey, is this yours? he demanded. It was Skeets' his ball, but it had burst. It hit me on the head and hurt me very badly, he said. It really is dreadful when a person can't have five minutes snooze without being injured by balls flying about. Anyway, it burst. Here it is. Go and play somewhere else. The grumpy man stalked off, leaving a very unhappy Skeets looking at his burst ball. I'm sure it couldn't have hurt him. It's so light, he said to the little green man, who was looking furious. He said, which meant... And I'll bet it didn't burst by accident, either. What a grumpy fellow. What's his name, anyway? I don't know. But he's a proper grumble socks. What a lovely name, said the little green man, who decided he liked giving names to people. Let's call him Grumble Socks. They decided to play hide-and-seek, and it was Skeets' turn to hide first. Skeets found a lovely hiding place and jumped across some bushes only to find Mr. Grumblesocks there, who had just unpacked a picnic. Oh, not you again, you scamp! Now look what you've done, he said. Actually, Skeets hadn't really done anything, as Greeny saw when he came to find out what was wrong. Skeets had only flicked Mr. Grumblesocks' hat from the bushes onto the rug. Skeets said that he was sorry, and he, the little green man and Zoom Zoom, went off to paddle in the shallow part of the river where there were stepping stones from one side to the other. This may have been a lovely way of keeping cool, but it didn't help to keep them out of the way of old Grumble Socks. He had come to cross the river on the stepping stones. Out of my way, he said rudely and pushed Skeets. Can't you see I'm on my way to start fishing? 
poor Skeets was soaked. The little green man was so furious. Skeets put on his swimming trunks so that his trousers could dry. And the little green man had an idea which he thought would teach old Grumble Socks a lesson. Walking along the riverbank, the little green man soon found the grumpy old chap sound asleep, with his fishing rod cast in the river and placed beside him. The little green man produced his antennae and directed his magic rays at the river. And then, the fishing rod. The rod began to be pulled as though a big fish was hooked. And this woke old Grumble Socks up. He wrestled to pull in the fish. <laughs> it must be enormous, he said. And it was. He reeled in the most gigantic fish you ever saw, who walked out of the water on an amazing pair of legs and stopped in front of the grumpy old chap. The fish took off his hat, removed the fish hook, and threw it at Grumble Socks. And this is yours, I believe. What do you mean by sticking it in my hat and pulling me up here? Grumble Socks decided to treat the whole thing as though it had never really happened, much to the little green man's annoyance. Aha, he said. I must be suffering from a touch of the sun, that's all. Ah, you don't really exist, fish. Oh, don't I, said the fish. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Freddy Fried. And this is my friend, Eli, the elegant eel. Grumble Socks was not so sure of himself again for a moment, but he decided to stick to his idea of sunstroke. <laughs> what, another one? He laughed. Eli coiled himself up on the riverbank as he spoke. Hmm, said Freddy. Well, if we don't impress you, I'm sure my other friend will. Out of the water came a large crocodile. Uh, meet the Irish alligator, Mr. Croc O'Dile. That did it. The terrified Grumble Socks fled, <laughs> leaving everything behind him. Freddy, Eli and Croc all turned towards the little green man, grinned and winked. Then, as the little green man's magic rays streaked out and encircled them, they quietly disappeared. Skeets, the little green man and Zoom Zoom hooted with laughter as they thought how funny the whole thing had been. You're very good at inventing names and people, Greeny, said Skeets, who stepped into his trousers, which were now dry. Thank you, said the little green man. I altogether enjoyed that, and I don't think Grumble Socks will trouble us again, he said. Skeets thought it was time for a relaxing row on the river. And he took first turn with the oars while Zoom Zoom tried very hard to steer the boat. After a while, the little green man took the oars and Skeets warned him not to row too far down river because there was a weir. What's a weir? asked the little green man. I've never heard of one before. Oh, it's a bit like a small waterfall where the river changes to a lower level. If a boat goes over the edge, it's bound to overturn. Greeny contented himself rowing around the safe parts of the river, and they were all enjoying the trip. Zoom Zoom left the tiller and started to fly around the little green man's head to get his attention. The little green man and Skeet saw that a sturdy motorboat, much bigger than their rowboat, was heading straight for them. To their horror, they saw that it was being piloted by Grumble Socks, who seemed determined to crash into them. As fast as they rowed, they were helpless. The little green man produced his antennae, which sparked and crackled as his magic rays streaked out to encircle Grumble Socks' motorboat. The motorboat simply stood still until the friend's rowboat had passed to safety. They mopped their brows 
and had just settled down for some more boating when Zoom Zoom again drew their attention to Grumble Sox's motorboat, coming at them from behind this time. The bows of the motorboat were brought up to touch the back of the rowboat, and Grumble Sox began to push them forward. Skeets wondered what was happening when he suddenly remembered the weir. The weir, Greeny, he cried. He's trying to push us over the edge. As quick as he could, the little green man produced his antennae once more. And this time, the magic rays encircled their own boat. It lifted straight up out of the water and stood mid-air whilst old Grumble Sox's boat shot straight beneath them and over the edge of the weir. The little green man turned the rowboat around and put it safely back in the water, facing away from the weir. As they pulled to safety, they looked back and caught a glimpse of Grumble Sox sitting on top of his upturned boat, looking very wet and sorry for himself. The little green man sat at the back of the boat and hooted with laughter. So much did he laugh that he overbalanced and fell straight into the river. In a moment, he was heaving himself back into the boat, dripping wet. He said, well, really. Interview. Oh. Uh, that's where you ask me questions and I answer them. Uh, questions? Well, uh, mm. uh... Well, like, sort of, um, what are you doing, that kind of thing. Oh, uh, yes. Well, uh, what are you doing and that kind of thing? <laughs> I'm starting a new series of First Post on April the 4th, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to lots of letters coming in for that. But the new news is that um, Adam Sunderland is going to be helping me out on that for the first six programmes of the series because I'm so busy. Ooh, why are you so busy? I'm going to be starting a brand new series, which is called Connections, and that's a quiz show for teenagers. Ah, well, uh, perhaps you could tell me what a quiz show is. Oh, dear. Well, have you ever seen Blockbusters? No, can't say that I have. Ah, well, that's OK, really, because it's, it's nothing like that, except that it's on at 5.15 during the weekdays, like mm -hmm. Blockbusters, and uh, it's for teenagers. But it's, gonna, it's a very different game, it's going to be very exciting, and there are lots and lots of great prizes. Oh, prizes! So you mean they give away radishes? No, not radishes. Why radishes? Well, that's what fraggles always do. Uh-huh, right. Well, no, what we'll be giving away is things like, oh, travel, you know, weekends mm -hmm. away, courses, mm -hmm. and, and no matter who comes on, whether they win or lose, they get a camera. Ah, oh, I have a friend who's a camera. Oh, no, 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 not that kind of camera. No, it's a different one. A, a stills camera for taking photographs. Ah, uh, I see. Mm. Well, when is this program coming? It'll be on in the late spring, sort of April, May-ish, you know. Late spring. Then what will you be doing in the summer? Summer. Back to Waltham Towers for hold tight. School's out, summer holidays, mm -hmm. lots of fun in the sun with, uh, of course, Bob Carroll G's and me and, um, and Spit. I will not spit! I am travelling Matt Fraggle, the August explorer. No, 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 no. I... You, no, you misunderstood. No, Spit is the name of Bob's dog. It's the name of a dog. Ah, oh, dog! He's I'm, a, oh. He's a very, very naughty dog, and he gets worse with age. In fact, I think you quite like him. Oh, what a horrible gaffe. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to it's blow okay. up you like that. Why don't we sit down here? Let All me right. sit next to you, and we will watch the Moomins. All oh, right, that's a good idea. Hmm. What is a dog, by the way? <laughs> together. Now, let's see. It says here that when I speak to the camera, I am actually talking to many silly creatures called viewers. Goodness gracious! How do you all fit in there? Why, that must be exceedingly uncomfortable. No wonder you watch all these programs. It takes your mind off the discomfort. Well, here's Sooty just for you. <laughs> 